You want to know what real life nursing is all about? This is the Daily Round Show by NRSNG.com. Hey guys, what's up? It's Susan with NRSNG. I was going to talk to you today a little bit about IV infiltration. So I want to start off by saying that usually the patient will alarm you that this is happening before you can recognize it yourself because it's a very painful thing. The patient will say, oh, my IV hurts. You know, anytime you push anything through it, um, the patient will complain. So infiltration basically means that the fluids have now gone outside of the vein and are in the surrounding tissues. Now, the one thing that you need to be worried about is extravasation, uh, which occurs when specifically vesicant fluids are in the surrounding connective tissues for the veins. So an example of a vesicant is dobutamine. Vancomycin is a huge one. Anything that's hyperosmolar, like um, anything greater than 10% dextrose or um, mannitol is definitely a vesicant. Jackson is a vesicant as well. So you definitely want to know your medications, know which ones are vesicants, and know, you know, monitor their IV site very well. If you, you know, find that vesicant has become extravasated or infiltrated, you will want to stop the infiltration immediately. You'll want to pull the IV unless you are going to be giving um, an antidote to that area. And you should definitely know which ones have antidotes and which ones do not. And the other reason why you wouldn't pull the IV right away is because you might want to try to pull off as much of the fluids as you possibly can. That depends on your situation, how much is in underneath the skin and things like that. But once all of that is finished, you definitely want to pull the IV and you want to elevate it so that the fluids are encouraged to um, soak back into your body and come back towards your heart. And you will want to make sure that the IV that you are placing is not too large. So oftentimes, especially in the ER, I have found that goal is to get the largest bore IV that we can uh, in case they need a specific kind of testing. However, sometimes the larger bore IVs aren't what's best for the patient's veins, especially if they have fragile veins. So patients like that are receiving chemo have super fragile veins. The elderly and the super young have fragile veins. There are certain, you know, conditions that you will find people have fragile veins. I think that dialysis patients have, uh, so they're super hard to poke, <laughs> get an IV, and it often will infiltrate. So you want to know the patients and their conditions or types of veins and the types of medications that you're putting through the IV. Uh, another thing to consider is location. So where is it that you're putting that lo that IV? Creases, like the antecubital, is a very common place because it's easier to palpate and feel for the vein. However, it's not always the best place for an IV because people will bend their arm and it can dislodge or displace the IV itself, causing infiltration. <laughs> um, wrists are another place that that will happen, and feet definitely. Feet are a big one that um, IV infiltration happen at. So you want to m make sure that you're monitoring and um, watching, assessing your IV sites, and then also placing them in the best place that you can. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, you guys should definitely know which medication, if you're giving an uh, IV medication, if it is in fact a vesicant, you should definitely know that before you give it. So good luck, you guys. Hope that helps.